our second speaker of the evening. Vicki Chatterton will be working from the Advanced Communication Series Storytelling Manual, Project 2. And the title of her speech is called The Ride. Vicki. Fellow Toastmasters, four weeks ago last Friday, I did one of the hardest things a parent has to do drop their child off at college. Now, my son and I had visited Western Washington University several times between April and um, September, getting ready for this new transition for him. And we would drive over to Western, and it was always the same. I would allow him to plug in his phone that has his music on it, and we'd listen to music for a little bit, and then we switched it to a podcast that he and I both like. We listened to the podcast and eventually we'd make it. Now we both have the same type of communication style. If we need to say something to one another, we say it. If we don't need to say anything, we're okay with each other's company. That's just our style. So we make it over to Western and we have toured it. Now when I dropped him off four weeks ago, this was the first time we had seen his dorm room. We had never seen it before because he didn't want the expectation of seeing one grand example and then him getting stuck with something that he wasn't too excited about. He got his room assignment a couple weeks before we started our adventure over and we realized it is a suite. And what a suite is, is there's three rooms within this area and then there's two boys in this instance in each room and they all share a bathroom I'm thinking this just can't be good <laughs> so on the way over we're kind of discussing it back and forth but not too much because I don't want to be this hovering parent we get in and I drop him off and this room is very small there's two twin beds desks at the front of it and some wardrobes but there's not a lot of room and he grew up having his own room. So this was going to be a big adjustment for him. I left him and went home. Very hard for a mother to do, let me tell you. And I waited. And I got a text that said, this isn't what I expected. And I text back, yeah, I know, give it a time. And we'll see what happens. Now, for the last four weeks, the only communication I had with him was texting. Because I wasn't going to be that parent who called him all the time to find out how he was doing. And I let, it hit, let him text me to initiate conversation. I got this text a couple weeks ago that said, next time you're at the store, could you see if they have any Nerf guns? I'm thinking to myself, okay, probably this little, you know, dorm room thing, guys, they all have to have Nerf guns or something like this. So I said, okay, and I texted him the next day and said, well, this is what Walmart has, and took a picture and sent it to him. And he said, great. There's this thing called humans versus zombies that they're doing. Okay, that sounds fun. Now, my child is generally one who didn't participate much, and so I'm trying to encourage this behavior, you know, be supportive. And I said, sounds like a fun time. And he said, well, I'll think about it. It's a lot of money for a gun. And then I get a text another couple days ago that this couple of his friends are going to do it. Okay. Sounds great. Now my exciting news is he said, I want to come home this weekend. This was last week. So Friday I drive over in anticipation. I'm so excited we're going to finally get to talk one to one. And I envisioned that we'll talk on the way home. So I text, he texted me and said, where are you? And I texted him back and said, just pulling off the freeway and I'll be there in a minute and I asked him when I got to the parking lot do you need help carrying anything he said sure so I walked up to his dorm room and he handed me his laundry <laughs> <laughs> I carried his laundry back to the car we both got in the car and he started talking about humans versus zombies I thought it was just this one little activity one night no, it is this thing that lasts seven days. Wednesday to Wednesday, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. They have to have 
this, they have to take a test in order to do this project for safety. And he goes on to tell me, Mom, this is so exciting. We all have this ammunition and there are only seven zombies and you only get picked from a random thing. And he's going on and on about this human versus zombies. And he's telling me about this ammunition. He keeps talking about it and I'm thinking, this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> He's trying to show me a YouTube video as I'm driving. I'm saying, I can't really watch this right now. And he goes on and on. And I'm thinking, this is not my child. We have these conversations that are short sentences of how we are going and how things are going. And this child has been erupted with this sense of adventure with this humans versus zombies. And he goes on and on. An hour. We are driving, and I realized that he is still talking about the experience of school. Now, it didn't have all about humans versus zombies, but I would say 75% of that conversation in that hour was about humans versus zombies. Not only did he tell me about this and try and show me the YouTube, he also tried to show me the website because they track it, and you can see how many people are getting infected and switch from human to zombie. There are all sorts of rules, and it is just amazing that this human versus zombie thing is a craze going on. As our ride continues, I realize that my child has changed, but that's okay. And I didn't say when you turn into a zombie, because I have this feeling that the zombies multiply this week. But I said, I want an update throughout the week to find out how everybody's doing. <laughs> that was our ride home. <laughs>